Yeah. This thing is sick. Damn. seawater look at this dude this is so the most disgusting car i've ever touched it's an exciting day uh because cage kits are coming to scan the c8 pretty freaking awesome uh last time when they scanned the race car for the c6 race car cage i wasn't even here uh so i didn't get to see their process but it's gonna be freaking awesome, and I can't wait to show you guys. So I'm gonna get this roof on, and then this thing will be pretty much ready to go for those guys. First step when scanning the car is laying all these freaking dots here. Why do you have to do all these dots? Oh, uh, they kind of show the positioning of everything. And mm. kind of put it all into the, the depths of things. Got it. Yeah, well, last time when you guys came here to scan the C6, I was like, what the hell is all this? It takes forever to peel them all off. Yeah. Forever. Hope you got plastic razor Yeah, exactly, plastic razor blade. <laughs> so yeah, this is uh, Seth from Cage Kits. He is sent here with his equipment, scanning equipment to scan the car. Some of his stuff up over here, brings his equipment and does his thing. So he'll be putting stickers on forever. And then we'll get start scanning. So I'll show you guys uh, once we bust out the heavy, heavy equipment here. Building. Wild. Look at this. This is the freaking process, man. This is this is how you build race cars nowadays, and it's mind blowing. 3D computer made race cars. <laughs> yeah, you build it in the computer, and then you figure it out if it or before you figure out if it works. That's the way to go. Also had him scan nitrous bottle and this whole area up here, just so we can uh, send it over to CAD Chris, and he can make sure that the radiator and all that interacts properly. We able to get this, the rocker, all the jam, everything, so that we know exactly where you guys are freaking nuts. Yeah. 3D car. Hmm. Look at the details on the door panel. It did come out good, yeah. huh? Oh, the tape for depth, right? Yep. Nice. Oops. Because the inside of the roof, that's obviously super important. That's why we cut it out. That's why we put the dots there so that we can get the two as far out and up as humanly possible. Nope. Especially in vets, there's no headroom when you put a cage. Not. So good, so good. Well, the next step, I guess, you bring this back and then Rob and the boys yeah. do your thing. Right. Yeah. Have tubes next time. Yeah, exactly, tubes. And hopefully in like the next two, three weeks, something like that, that would be that would be perfect. But that's kind of the the way the world works now. Like you can actually do this and get this done, and I don't have to be cutting and grinding and notching for two or three weeks. Like these guys do it in the computer. The compute the bend software bends it, laser cut notches it, drops right in. It's nuts. Skips every step. Yeah, it skips all the steps. It's the biggest cheat. But yeah, cage kits, you guys are the man. Thank you so much. I said thank you so much for coming out. Absolutely. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. These freaking things. We got Chris over here figuring out sizing for air filter to make sure that it'll all fit within the chassis when we go to build the engine mount. So sick ass K and N sprint car box filter. The best. Figuring that out there. Because obviously that has to play with the engine placement. Well, I think what I'm gonna do is put these on the car and just kind of try to get a rough ride height figured out and see what kind of ballpark we're in. Um, I need to get some of my Ford Star wheels and put them on here, but I do have to drill out the center or the studs because these are 14 mil studs instead of 12 mil. So that'll be interesting. And just set the car down and get a rough ride height. Pretty cool. All right, Chris and I have a couple of things that we're gonna do. We got our ride heights all measured. 
Uh, he also measured the wheels and tires that are gonna go on this thing so that he can model those as well. So race car rears, race car fronts. Um, now we're gonna get the engine to the exact position that it is gonna be in CAD and just put our eyes on everything. Cause right here is a very, very close contact position. So we're gonna get some measurements probably off of the face of the block too right here and put the engine in that position and kind of see. And another thing that we're gonna try to get done is placing the handbrake. Boom, very, very cool. Um, we have the model of this and we need to see, cause I want to trim out the side of the tunnel. So we're going to come up with a game plan of where we can trim the tunnel out, how we're going to mount that, see what kind of plate we're going to manufacture. And then this too, super sick. I'm not sure how much I actually talked about this, but this is a custom made shifter for our setup because most shifters for this transaxle being that they're in buggies means that the, this is all the way on the floor. Right, so you're sitting and it's down on the floor, but in a Corvette, it's up on the tunnel. So he custom made from Sand Cars Unlimited. They custom made me this with a low handle, still keeping the leverage ratio where we want it and still being like a very short throw. So very happy about that. Thank you, Sand Cars Unlimited. Like you guys, I'm in awe with how nice they made this, how quick they made it. Plus we made modifications and changes and they came through. So I'm excited to place that in the car as well and see how everything lays out. And I guess we start cutting. Putting a bolt here so that it can rest on the cross member like this one is. From here to here, I have a quarter inch gap, I think, or six millimeter gap. I don't know if that, I know. Or more like half inch. This is probably different than the cab. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yeah, because it just, maybe this hump is just slightly wider here. Yeah. Then you have it, right? Okay, well then let's go as far forward as this will let us, and then we can remeasure and compare. Okay. Cool. Getting it right, getting it right. Yeah, your height's pretty spot on. Cool. Engine doesn't look totally square, like maybe this side is a little bit higher. Yeah, this that side, higher? maybe, okay. yeah. We're trying to see if we can go even further forward with the engine, even further forward than the CAD model, and even further forward than we just put it in this position. But worried about intake manifold and air box running into this. Which it definitely will. 23 millimeters and you, and you ought to put a window on this side of it too have to weld and how do you weld, weld in there how do you weld i don't know just cut it out and leave a hole See, this is what i always just did too i just put this on there and i simply just eyeballed it and like all right if that's square on the engine like that's not a lot of room because you know it's gonna go straight up it feels light, dude. Oh, oh, dude. On my race car, I dream of having hinges on my hood. But you know, the C6 goes the other way. Yeah. So yeah, you just can't. That's so funny. Dang, that's nice. Yeah, something else that uh, Chris does not have in his model is the hood clearance and hood height. And he wants to help me place this fuel filler. And we want to try to get it up in the area that it needs to be. So throw on the Anderson hood and do a little measure test. Yeah, your arm, dude, your arm. Your arm. I'm getting there. <laughs> so it's, I'm pretty sure it's like about here, you know, from my memory there. Yeah. Okay, we can get up pretty high. Yeah, pretty good, right? Uh, yeah. And you see what I mean with like the nitrous bottle clearance and oh, it's in yeah. that, it's in that nice cavity. Yeah. yeah. We can uh, set this in and you can grab just that side. Last one get you the rough idea yeah so it's five degrees it's probably something like this six yeah right there there we go yeah yeah right into that freaking pocket in there okay uh radiator and fuel stuff all figured out place the fill tube is going to work we confirmed that uh, we can get the steering rack out with that fill tube in 
I'm gonna leave it out so that we can figure out if we can power it and get it to turn on and actually work. Not sure about that. I've got some people asking me about that. Uh, gonna start figuring out placement for the handbrake. Measured some stuff on the race car, so I'm just gonna figure out where this goes, mark it exactly compared to the pedals, like where that is, and then I'll show you kind of the plan here. There's a brace in here that's basically like a piece of box tube that's welded all the way down. And I want to cut into this and set the handbrake in because this handle with this on top of the tunnel is very, very tall. So I'd like to be able to sink it down a little bit. And just because the, the tunnel on a vet is so freaking tall, sink that down a little bit and I feel like it'll be at a better spot. So I'm just do a little measure sesh here and place this and then we'll see what's up inside. Now we need to look inside, figure out the cut, the depth and make those cuts pretty much. So I'm gonna have Chris bring up the drawing and he'll tell me how much we can cut. We can kind of go from there. But that's where the handbrake goes, right there. Okay, I have these things positioned. Basically what I did is I went and measured the race car from here to the center line of the handbrake, 39 and a half or something like that. Got that all marked up where the center line right there, there's the mark. And then from the center line of the handbrake, offset back here, that's three and a half inches. Put it to three and a half. It feels a little bit weird because I'm gonna be honest, this is a little intrusive to the elbow room, but it's not bad. Like you really, if you're shifting normal, it's no problem. If you try to hit it, yeah, you can hit it. But I think it's, relatively normal shift here. So now we just need uh, Chris to bring up the model and take a look at what we got and make a game plan from here. But pedals being bolted in and all this and this crazy shifter is pretty cool. So Chris is going to place the handbrake in the position that this is in, which is perfect because it just so happens that it bolts into one of these rib nuts right here. And then we'll place the shifter and everything just so we have all of that. Um, it's good to know, right? It'll be fixed for life. That's not how we're gonna mount it. We, Chris and I came up with a really cool way of, of mounting it, which we'll dig into later. But for now, placing the handbrake where it needs to go. And then we're gonna kind of dive into the fuel cell and go over some fuel cell stuff. It goes to the bottom of that. The master cylinder goes to that one. The rotator goes to that Did one. You yeah. <laughs> gotcha, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> One of the things that needs to get done now that we know where the shifter is going to be placed, like it's not permanent, but I know where it's going to be, is figuring out the shift cables. I've been thinking about it. Before I had this mock-up rear cover from Weddell, but it doesn't have any of the shift cams or anything on it. So I had no idea where the actual cables and everything hook up to. So they sent me my actual tail shaft housing with all the components and everything in there. Look at all that freaking stuff. And that is where the cable mounts to. And then from my understanding, you make a cable mount right here and the cable will come in here, bolt to the side of the transaxle and then be, uh, yeah, bolted to here. So I'm gonna put this on and then just kind of game plan where the cables are gonna go. This must be reverse, click that in and this is the actual cam and everything in here. Oh! Oh, 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 that feels good. Wow. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah. This thing is sick. Damn. Okay, now to kind of game plan on how this all goes and figure what this does here. There's the linkage thing up there. Mm-hmm. So yeah, they were saying like you just make a mount for that. Like I'm surprised that they don't have a mount for that. We went over the fuel pump design from Fuel Safe. I'm gonna show you guys something. This is it's unbelievable. It's super cool. But basically, since we placed the handbrake and the shifter, and the goal is to take the fuel pump out the top of the tunnel. So it the fuel tank sits here the fuel pump is gonna come out of the top of the tunnel. And I'm gonna show you guys right now how we are able to see like, all right, we're gonna have to move it just a little bit further forward so that you can get this to clear with the shifter in the perfect location. Um, because fuel safe, 
Chris designed the outside dimensions of the cell and where it was gonna go, and FeelSafe went ahead and just gave us the proof, and we need to make a small change to the fuel pump location. But yeah, that's the goal. Fuel tank in here as far forward as possible, because the stock tanks, if you guys remember, are right here. That's a big difference. That's moving it a lot further forward. And obviously it's only gonna be like 10 gallons instead of 18 gallons. That's a big difference too. But yeah, I'm gonna show you guys what Chris and I have been working on with FuelSafe, because they, they killed it, man. So we blast a five inch hole saw right down the tunnel. See this, it comes out of there. There you go, Chris. Yes. So that's staring straight up through this tunnel. If we have the pump right there, and have a hole saw blasted right through there. That way we can get the pump out of the cell. Yeah, let's take a look at the cell. All right, so we placed the uh, shifter housing, we placed the handbrake. Um, we made our five inch cut to the tunnel. That's why we're playing around with this, five inch hole saw, trying to figure out where it goes to, in order to get the fuel pump out. Yep, so shifted the fuel pump forward so those are lined up so we can access that and then give you guys an idea yeah. of how the fuel pump goes into the tunnel, clearance for the fittings. How tight the clearance is on the fittings. Yep. It's crazy. And then we have a, a, a thick bottom cap to the fuel cell. So that caps the bladder off, but at the same time, both the, the fuel cell housing and the cap have flanges that get sandwiched with bolts all the way down the main tunnel frame rails that have OEM riv nuts in there. So that's the bolts going up are what's gonna hold the fuel cell in place. And it bolts with the same bolts, all the bolts that the, we took the plate off, it's gonna mount in the exact same location. Yep, here's just a cleaner look at the fuel cell. Because of the height being restricted with um, the fittings clearing the, the tunnel, um, we had to raise the fuel pump up an inch with a spacer in there so that the bottom of the fuel pump wasn't punching through the bottom cap. And then fill plate up front, we'll have the uh, fill tubes coming in right under the radiator, and then we'll weld those on. And that's where we were placing this because this is gonna sit up here and it's gonna come out of the fuel filler, go across the top of this. And the front of the cell is basically going to be in here, right in the front of the engine bay with the radiator over the top. So the fill plate sits here and is going to get filled to this dry break up here. Yeah, that's literally the, in the tunnel, the fuel cell is gonna be in there. First of all, the fuel cell, it goes to it's in line with up here, right? Not not in line with this. It's like in line with the front of the chassis uh, yeah, right there. It's it's about oh, like right. a quarter inch off yeah. of this cross member, right? Yeah. Here. So it yep. lives in this yeah. all the way up. Yep. Right. Yeah, and then the cutouts that you saw on the bottom flange, those are to clear the subframe. So if we ever had to, um, we can just well, we will have to drop the fuel cell straight out without it. Um, or the subframe or being or able to come down. Yeah. Come down. Yeah, and that's this feature right here, the little cutout that are just, but yeah, you see the shape of that. So the return and the vent are on the very back, because obviously that's where the engine is. So the return and the vent and all that, it lives about right here. The fuel pump is gonna live here, just enough so that we can hole saw and get it in and out of the top with that five inch hole saw. And it's gonna mount to this flange right here, this, this million bolt plate, right where it needs to. How nuts is that? 